Hello and welcome to For the Love of Paint. In this one we will be preparing a Astra for some paintwork. So we've got a couple of bumpers to do, rear wing and a front wing to do. We're also doing the bonnet as well. So yeah, this is quite a long video. I think it's going to be the longest one that I've uh, done so far. And here I am. I'm just noticed some high spots in the bumper. I'm just going to get the heat gun on these high spots and you'll see what I do next. What I normally just do, just get something flat, maybe something like a, a screwdriver here and just make it into a slight low spot something that I could just, just get a tiny bit of filler in and it will be good as new it came up really nice so it wasn't cracked it wasn't fractured um, there's the same underneath where the that's it where the line is there again that had a little high spot I just done the exact same thing just using that line or trying to keep that line in and yeah it works an absolute treat definitely helped that the bumper was off I could get my hand behind as well and just keep some even pressure on not putting too much pressure on to create a big low spot or try and take that line out so let's keep it keep it small keep it really small I didn't need anything with a large surface area on it. So I use a screwdriver. So I'm going to go straight onto the bonnet. A few, a few quick clips here. I'm using 180 grit. And yeah, I already buzzed the, buzzed the repairs down with 80s and then 180s just to feather the edge and then use some Evercoat Easy Sand to yeah to do the filler work on it was just slightly dented nothing major nothing that needed any deep filling so again I'm just using 180 grit on this uh, small block and then I will flip to the 320s because I'll be putting some plastic primer on these and then some 1K primer, same as the bonnet. And then later on in the video, I will be putting some wet on wet primer um, over the full lots because I'm painting a new wing and a new front bumper. I'm already using the wet on wet primer and I'm just going to put it over this full bumper and a few spots on the, uh, the bonnet there. So yeah, so you want to get the repairs to about 80-90% done with the um, the 180s and then just that last that last hurdle with the uh, 320s. So then you're not creating any low spots, you're not getting it and you're not getting it ripply with the uh, the 320s. Just basically sanding out the 180 scratches. So when I'm doing this sort of thing, I like to just do a panel at a time. So I'll stay on this, do the 180s, do the 320s. So you then move on to the bonnet, then do the 180s and 320s. I know some people can rush around, just go around, do all the repairs that they have to do in the 180s and go all the way back around. Do it with three times. But you can just uh, kind of boost yourself doing that sort of thing. And other straight away, I'll just hit the full area with three twenties first. Try and keep away from edges, and then I'll be going over with five hundred. I'm painting this in HS top coat. Glacier white 
No, I'm sorry, it is Olympic white. Colour code is 40R. So I'm just doing the same with these, just going over it with 320 grit. Again, just being careful of the edges. I'll remove any 320 scratches that I've left with the, the block so that'll give uh, especially on the outer parts of the bind areas definitely a, a smoother a smoother surface for the 1k primer which you definitely want because I never like putting too much of the 1k primer on pairs You, you start going three or four coats with one key primer and um, you might as well just put some high build on if your repairs are not bad but these were uh, um, just for just getting rid of the uh, scratches the repairs were good I'm going nice and quick. So this hoover is really good as well. It's a it's a Merca, and yeah, it's a it's a beast. Very low dust from this hoover. We've had this quite a while now, and it's been chugging along. Use it every day. with bumpers or any sort of panels that you're always working on you want to always make sure that panels are clean before you start sanding before you start doing yeah, full sanding work you know you're going to go through more materials and you find that your sandpapers just will not cut um, effectively there'll be patches and yeah it's uh it's you start as you mean to go on and you'll be uh it'll be sloppy work so that's what i've done i already cleaned the full bump before starting sanding work which i left out the video and here i am just going around with the red scotch bright getting all the edges i go back over it a few times you know any shiny spots this will uh, eat them up easily. Very good, the uh, red scotch bright. It helps get into all them little gaps as well, which you won't be able to get with the soft back sponges. But this will, this, you can just use your fingers in different angles and areas to make sure you get the full um, surface that you want keying up. So you're just using different parts of your hand, get stuck in. That's it. Everything gets hit, and um, yeah, it's it can be uh, it can be challenging work sometimes. It's not exactly hard graph. It's not like you got to work on the roads or anything, but you know you can work to you're working to a fast pace sometimes. We're in the endurance game, working up a sweat. Again, it's just edges, edges, edges. So just using again different parts of your hand. You've got a feel for the panel as well that you're doing. Keep your eye all over it, making sure that you're not missing anything. And again, clean this panel, cleaned every single panel before uh, I started prepping them. So where I'm going, I'm just going to go, I ended up foaming to that edge. 
there, so I'm just prepping anything below that. And then just blowing it in around that door there. So I ended up polishing that area and using some 2000s to key up the rest and go back over where I uh, I was using the red scotch bright. So instead of using 320s here, I've just gone, there's a small area, gone for 500s. That's it again, just trying to be careful. Again, sometimes you can you can lead to a nastier job if you, you keep cutting through in places, getting shrink back. Um, and you could potentially just run yourself into a few more issues and uh, give the, the paint some issues down the line if, you, uh, if you're not careful cutting back on them areas. You could uh, most often not need priming. So I've got some 320s on the block. Then just work into that swage line there. I prefer straight blocking. I used to do the sort of the cross hatch method, the cross pattern method, and I find that switching to doing the straight blocking, I get far better results. You've just got to keep an eye on the, the texture of the primer and be aware of how much builds on there and I almost treat it like spray painting as well so I'll be doing almost 50-50 overlaps that's the way I do it anyway kind of treat it like spray painting and try not to go through any one spot more than uh, more than another I'm trying keep it as equal as possible so obviously I have cut a lot of this down as well especially to keep the video short um, and I'm just using some 320 grit starting off with just to get this uh, inside edge cleaned up do end up cutting through a bit there to some uh, to some filler underneath so that fine filler which I ended up puffing some wet and wet primer over this rear quarter as well obviously staying away from that where our soft edge foaming otherwise you'll get a primer edge so again just using that sandpaper not digging my hands in there but I'm using the sandpaper to do its work you almost create that so you'll just see me folding it up I'm not digging in but I'm using the sandpaper as a little tool almost creating like a little like a little soft pad and yeah it seems to so I like to do it, works a treat. Especially in some of the, the tight areas there. You need uh, you need it to be a little bit more you need the uh, that course of sandpaper. Otherwise you'll just be trying to be sanding there for uh, forever with uh, soft pads. So I end up switching to some 500 grit and going back over the 320 grit uh, scratches. And obviously I've masked out the, uh, the door wrap, which is there. Uh, you don't want to get dust all in the car. Keep it clean. And here it is, this soft pad, I really love this uh, this pad, it's quite rigid but also flexible. Got some 500s on it and I can just go over the swage lines, go over the full full body. That primed area. 
and remove the 320 scratches but also still be creating a nice shape on them uh, on that rear quarter so again I'll probably get it say close to 90% done with the 320s um, and then get the 500 something like on this pad and just remove the 320 grit scratches that's it going over these edges were easy after uh, getting them down with the 320s and I'll just get, go over quickly with the 500s on the orbital so after doing that straight onto the bumpers obviously these bumpers are all prepped up just got a bit of plastic primer and adhesion promoter there from Seachem um, really good products these I like the black primer which oddly enough obviously a lot of people that are regularly doing body know that black primer is often not very nice to sand down um, and grey primer is all the best but funnily enough in this product I find that the black primer is the best to sand down which is why I've used it the grey primer just it's very gritty and it just never seems to dry, not, um, dry down very nice at all so into the paint room everything is clean and panel wipes blown off ready to go for the plastic primer so there we are lesson on plastic primer this is over the new bumper so with this one again it was red scotch bright and I went over with 500 on the with a soft pad so, so I'm just getting all the edges evening so it is quite tight in the booth I should have put that car over to the side a little bit more and use that panel stand but I was trying to do this job quick and didn't give it much thought I thought I'd have enough room but that's something that we uh, we learn as we go along I'm putting just a couple of light coats on each bumper. It's a nice warm day and it flashes off really quickly. From the tech sheet on this um, lesson all 1K primer, it does say leave it a good five minutes to flash off. Even though it looks flashed off and it looks dry. Sometimes uh, I'll just do what the tech sheet says and yeah, I'll go out, mix some wet on wet primer, come back in and it'll uh, be perfect to go. A couple of coats over the bumper two. And I end up just using white wet on wet primer, which is more for the UK guys and old English, looks like old English white. which doesn't cover very well so I end up putting two coats of the Ooh. wet and wet primer down two medium coats I've already stone chipped it 
which uh, certainly helps for consuming less bait of the top coat, which is uh, use really good top coat. It's a um, really top high end quality uh, car paint. It's not your cheap old nasty. Uh, I'm not going to name any brands here, but it's not your cheap or nasty, uh, just your standard top coat. So here I am putting on the wet and wet primer. So I only put one coat over the rear quarter on the bumper. Putting on the edge. Same for the door there. And I'll end up just puffing some fade out agent over there. So uh, I'm not going heavy, but three turns out in the fluid, 1.3, and I'm saying cut this time I'm using the TE10. You know what I have on the gun? Laid it down nice and fine, dry down smooth, perfect surface for painting over. So really see through, which you probably expect when I'm using a black one case, but not too worried. And I would just like to say that I'm, um, I'm not I'm really enjoying this new challenge of making and creating some videos. Um, and once I get some viewing numbers and I get better with editing, I hope you enjoy uh, the video too. I'm really hoping to interact, talk with some, some uh, enthusiasts, people that love to trade, um, DIYers, anyone that needs help, apprentices, people learning. Obviously, I'm always learning too. And yeah, just um, have a bit of a, a community going on. I can't wait to, uh, to see what the rest of the year holds. I've got loads of um, different ideas for the channel, different sort of content to put out there. That will blend with the that will blend with spray painting videos. At the moment, yeah, I'm just going uh, nice and light nice and with coat. I'm using that coat. And you can see the difference, obviously, with the bumper being white on the other side. It probably looks like I'm going uh, a bit more than medium wet, but this is, this is how it's going. And you don't want to cover it. I don't want to put the wet and wet primer on too heavy. It's really oh, just on a one coat system, especially with spray primers and whatnot. See, I was running out of primer there. I mixed up 500 mils for the lot, and I thought it's better to get this primed because if I had to, if I ran out, I had to go mix some more primer. Then the bumper will be closest to the fan and I'll be able, it will be much easier and much better to put some um, primer on the this bumper right there now I'm going out mixing some primer and then getting over spray onto this bumper Make sure all edges are done. Easy rounding and get a nice even coat on. And get it down flat. Flat smooth surface. You can go to that top coat to set on.
Yep, so like I said, I'm at the moment I'm really enjoying this new challenge of creating, editing videos and being able to share, put content out there, do something that I'm not exactly 100% comfortable with. Um, but it's all for the love of paint, which I do. I love this place, I love this job. Um, once I fell in love with it, once I got the bug, that's it and uh, I'm gripping on hook. Um, every day is a school day, and since I've been an apprentice, I've worked my ass off um, to get myself up to that's how much primer I've got left. Which I think is a, is a really good standard for the time, for the time that I've been in this trade. I've come from a personal training background, so uh, there's a lot of transferable skills that I can I brought from personal training to spray painting in the way in which I learn and I apply myself to the job. And I'm quite relentless on covering all ground and making sure um, I just nail technique I, I, I focus on technique and how I apply myself whether it's in prep or as you see in paint I see him getting the eye all over that panel there getting that wet edge uh, it's melting in. So it can go quite wide. Get an eye all over it, making sure the edge is melting in. And what I'll do is put that. I'll go and in. hit bake. Give it five minutes. Got to flash any thinners completely off. And. Yeah, while of uh, while it's baking, I mix it with paint. I'm getting myself anyway, ready well. for the top coat. Flash that right off. Just give it a tap rag on the end, um, the areas where and it will be beautiful. I've used the wet and wet primer and the fade out agent. Right. Come on. Just make sure. Uh, no overspray from the bottom of the primer that can cause any bits of dust. And with this job, I tried something new as well. So, so what I decided to do is go on, work from paint. the back. So, um, normally. But this stuff is still obviously got that black primer underneath but it's, it's really see-through that's why I do prefer to put a light coat on and then a medium coat uh, most of the time you uh, get that coverage but that is definitely good enough for putting like the top coat over the top uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a different style and normally do it one after another uh, which you can do with this HS top coat
here I am just uh, tacking off making sure there's no dust from the overspray we're nice and clean and like I said you, you're going to save a lot of paint doing this with this HS top coat because you seem to let it dry off a little bit too long you end up putting far too much paint on your second coat it seems just to take longer to to melt in and yeah to, to get a nicer finish it, it just seems to work better with doing this sort of grip and rip method um, the coverage is excellent with this last not top coat I've not found a colour yet where I need to put three coats on two coats on every colour that I've done and you get coverage it's um, really good stuff There you go, you're pretty much covered off in one coat. I know I've got a bit of um, a white primer down there, but even with grey primer, it's pretty much covered off in one. Yeah, you do get an excellent finish with this stuff. It holds its body as well. It holds its gloss really nice. warm in the booth as well so even in the winter 25 degrees in the booth no problem doing this method with this I'll hold back maybe a touch on the first coat but you know, I've got no issues with the winter or summer this method all the way I just, I just uh, yeah it, it works Our jobs doing this method without compromising quality either. That's it, just keep them even. Straight back down, turn the down. Keeping an eye all over the panel. Whites often people seem to struggle with. And it is hard to see that wet edge, especially when you're painting large areas, painting from panels. So I'm used to painting quite a few white vans, so I can't say that I've really struggled with whites too much. So, just doing this, uh, laying out this job the way I've done it. I think I would uh, do the same method again. Because if I start to, if I was to start from obviously the other end of the booth and work my way down, I'd just say uh, overspray right all over the panel wouldn't have worked. Um, if I was, like I said before, to put one coat, just one coat on each panel, come back round, I'll be putting too much paint on to try and melt it in and try and get a good finish out of it. It just takes far too long. But by doing like a grip and rip type method, one coat on after another, saving paint and you're getting quality finish. The only worry was by the time I got round to finishing the bonnet, with the overspray from the bonnet that landed on the bumper and the other panels and created on the dry spray which it didn't and I was extremely happy Oh baby! So that's it, that's how quick that building was done See that light there, nice finish. Definitely, um, 
very minimal polishing. Which is what we all hope and want when we do this job. I don't mind a bit of polishing but we can get away with it. And uh, you know, try and make some money and I think holding an original cloth of what if we're using clear or we're using um, top coat if we can keep the original cloth off the gun. I think um uh, should not much better. probably happen is would have had to put some fade out agent over the over the panels or worst case scenario put some more top water uh, and then never done this again but because I've tried it worked we can do it again Try and learn, learn through experience. Not be, not be scared to do something different. Until I've worked, worked really well, I'll never do it again. Only one way to find out. Why 
they're all over it. He's got that edge. Medium wet coat in the same time. Yeah, I thought the pressure keeps going up and down. as well, which is a good retainer, top coat, and all the uh, golden feet, SG, and lower and some of the other things that we can use, the equipment that we use, and by doing this my future won't get any problems, but you won't be able to do with the uh, lower VLC. Something top coat or using solid. So I'm going to thank you all for watching. If you could comment, like, and subscribe, that would be Woo! awesome. Let me know your thoughts, feedback, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Got more content to come. All the different, fresh, new ideas. I hope you can bring to the YouTube universe as it is, and um, yeah, I'm really happy there. Give it a go. Oh yeah. Not on this. Not a thing done do to me. Me, baby. Looks like I'll be doing that again. It's all the overspray sticking to the water. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Please. Oh, baby.